Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, value, word, not problems, happy fun puzzles. Much more doable if you call them happy fun puzzles. Okay, so if mom asks you to do the dishes, for example, it's not the dishes, it's happy fun dishes, okay? Just keep smiling, keep wiping that dish over and over, okay? All right, let's take a look at, you tell me, let's write some equations for these statements. Ed had 50 nickels and dimes. In other words, he had two things that totaled 50. How can you write that as an, ex as a, an equation? He had something, we'll call it nickels, a number, and he had some dimes, and there were 50 of them, right? Now that doesn't tell us that there are, oh, 25 of each. No, it could be 49 and one. It could be 50 and zero. We don't know. We just made it up, okay? Here's another one. Sue sold 27 crabs and lobsters. What's the equation? Okay. C plus L is 27, right? Okay. We don't know that there are, I mean, that's, if you can't, if you can't divide that into two. It's not 13.5 crabs and 13.5 lobster. That's disgusting. So it could be 25 and two, could be 13 and 14. We don't know. All we know that this is an equation Crabs and lobsters equal 27, all right? Here's another one. Marty bought 86 telephones and computers. So we got what? T plus C is equal to 86, right? All right. Is there any way to solve this equation or this equation or this equation individually? No, right? There's no way of possibly knowing how much there is. We're going to need more information, right? Because you can solve an equation like this. D plus 2 equals 12 because there's only one variable. This has two variables, we can't solve it. We can give possibilities, but there's no definitive answer, all right? Until just a second, let's do another one. You give me an equation for this one. Ed had 50 nickels and dimes worth $3.25, okay? Well, let's do that. Let's just say Ed, um, Ed had some, let's just say Ed had some nickels and dimes Forget how many. Ed had nickels and dimes worth $3.25. And here's the way to do this. And as soon as I do this, you'll see this and go, okay, I can use this. Okay, you have nickels and dimes. A pretend there's a, somebody comes in and says, here, here's a pile of nickels and dimes. Can you find out how much they're worth? What would you do? What's the first thing you'd do to figure out, fast as you could, how much you had all together? You'd separate them, right? You'd go, okay, I got a pile of nickels here and a pile of dimes there. And you'd count the nickels and dimes and go, okay, for every nickel, I'm gonna multiply this pile by five. That's the number of cents I have. If I uh, have a pile of dimes, I'll multiply that pile, how many I have by 10, that's how much money I have, all right? If Ed has nickels and dimes worth $3.25, well, what we're gonna say is this. We'll say five times the number of nickels plus 10 times the number of dimes equals that many cents. Because if we're gonna do cents, let's do 325 cents. That's because five cents here, 10 cents there, 325 total, that's your seven, okay? Let's say Sue sold $187 worth of crabs and lobsters. Crabs were $4 each and lobsters were $7 each. You'd sit there and go, oh boy, I don't know how you, okay, well, let's say crabs are $4 each. I'd go, okay, well, that's four times crab plus seven times lobster. She sold that much total. Okay, that'll be $187 total. So $4 and so, okay, I got it. And that's your equation. That's not too hard, right? Okay, look at the last one. Marty spent $450 on office supplies. Telephones are $35. Ink pads were $12. Well, I mean, telephones are 35. You're just going to write, okay, 35 times the number of phones. Ink pads, they're 12 each. I'll just put P for pads. The whole total was $450. Now notice, again, is it possible to solve this equation by itself? And the answer is no. You have one equation with two variables. You can't do that. This one, same thing. You got two variables. You can't do it. You can piddle around and try different things that will work, but there's no guarantee that this is going to be what the answer is. To do an equation or to solve uh, variables that there are, if there are two of them, you're ha you have to have two equations. Remember how we, we've done substitution and elimination? We had to have 
you know, 2x plus 3y equals 12, 8x minus 7y equals negative 4, you have to have two equations with two variables. That's what we're going to do with these. So we're going to make up two equations based on a short little paragraph that your book presents to you. Okay, here's one for example. Bill had 50 nickels and dimes whose value was $4. How many of each did he have? Okay, well, we're going to need to come up with two equations. Well, first off, he had 50 nickels and dimes. That's pretty easy, right? You have a, a chunk of nickels and dimes, 50 total. Well, that's a piece of cake. I got an N plus a D, and that's going to equal 50. There we go. Okay, if their value is $4. Now, this is where we get to that second uh, group we just did a minute ago, right? The value is $4. Well, what you can do is you could say for every nickel, it's going to be worth five cents, right? So I'm going to do five times the number of nickels. This is like you piling them on your bed. Okay, you pile a bunch of nickels on your bed, then you start counting how many nickels you have and multiply by five. If you do that with nickels, you do 10 times the number of dimes, obviously, because dimes are worth 10 cents a piece. The value total, how many cents is $4 worth? 400, right? Boom, there we go. We've just created two variables, two equations. Now we can solve this, right? Okay, let's do it. Now, again, you, you, you can use substitution, you can use elimination, whatever you want. Whichever one of those you want, you go ahead and do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and use elimination. I'm gonna multiply this by five, the whole line by five, this by five, and then 50 times five is 250. All right, now I'm gonna subtract, yoink, that's gone. Five minus 10 is negative five. 250 minus 400 is negative 150. And then negative 5 goes into negative 150 three, uh, 30 times. Okay, that means I have 30 dimes. If I have 30 dimes and I have 50 total, I'm going to have to have 20 nickels, right? Okay, and there we go. Let's prove it. How much is it worth? How much is 30 dimes worth? $3, right? Okay, so that's $3. How much are 20 nickels worth? 20 times 5 is 100 cents. That's a dollar. Add those together. There we go. We got it. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. The fishmonger. Your parents might have warned you about people like these who go around monging all the time. Okay. The fishmonger sold codfish for six each and mussels for one each. Harriet bought a total of 26, spent 86. How many codfish did she buy? Well, this sounds ludicrous, but anyhow, we'll just, we'll just, uh, Assume this is in England because they have pence and all these different things. You know, I, don't know. I still don't understand British money at all. So anyway, I don't understand British terms. Like a lift is an, an elevator, I think. And a, anyway, the bobby and the policeman and so on. Okay, well, he sold codfish for six, mussels were one. Okay, she bought a total of 26. Let's do that first. She bought a total of 26. So in other words, the C, the number of codfish, plus the number of mussels, that's going to be 26 total, right? Okay. She spent 86. Okay. The codfish were six. So we go, okay, six times the codfish plus mussels were one. Just write the end. We don't need to write a one. She spent 86. That's going to be 86. Yoink. There we go. We got our two uh, equations. Now, this looks like an easy opportunity to go ahead and do the elimination because you have M minus M. Let's go ahead and subtract there. I'm going to subtract all the way across. Okay, 1C minus 6C is negative 5C. These cancel. 26 minus 86 is negative 60. So negative 5 goes into negative 60 12 times. Okay, that's good. And if the codfish, she bought 12 of them, she bought 26 total items which means she had to have bought 14 mussels. By the way, the cost, let's prove that we're right. Mussels, if they're one each, 14 times one is 14. If she, the codfish were six each, 12 times six is 72. Well, lo and behold, those added together give you 86. And there you go, and that's it, okay. And that's how you solve those happy fun puzzles, okay. A little quick geometry. There is a saying in geometry, uh, AA means AAA. In other words, if you have two uh, triangles and one of the angles is the same as another angle, 
And also, a second angle is the same as another angle on the triangle. Well, we have to have 180 degrees inside of every single triangle, right? If these two are the same, then this one here is going to have to be the same as this one here because they're going to both have to add up to the same number, which is 180. So anytime you see this, you can assume that the third angle is exactly the same measure. It's congruent, all right? So knowing that, let's take a look at this wacky picture. This is the kind of picture, by the way, if you feel comfortable doing this, go ahead and take your book and like you can draw the first one over here. And if you want to, just turn your book physically like 90 degrees around and then draw the entire thing again because it's sometimes helpful if you're a visual learner to draw pictures of this kind of stuff. And they'll tell you in this one, for example, find X and Y. Well, let's just leave this one the way it is. This one, we can draw this upside down if you want to, to kind of make it look a little nicer. So I'm gonna take this thing, this bigger triangle, although it doesn't look bigger, and doesn't look like a triangle either, which is pretty pathetic. Anyhow, if you take this triangle right here and flip it almost 180 degrees, like so the, you know, the six is on the left and the X is on the right, like so, there's the six on the left, and there's the X on the right, there's the top angle, looks like this now, and then the bottom right looks like this now, which means that's kind of gone there, right? And the bottom's the Y. So this, you can see, is a similar triangle to this because since it has two angles, AA means AAA. So there we go, we have our, our setup. So let's go ahead and do the same thing we did last lesson about finding similar sides of similar triangles, and let's figure what this is. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go like this. I'm gonna go left to left is right to right. That means four to six is equal to five to, to x. So cross multiply gives me four x. Six times five gives me 65. No, it doesn't, it gives me 30, okay. And x is gonna be 30 divided by four, which reduces to 15 divided by two. That's my x. Y, I'm just gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm, uh, I'll go, how about, I'll just do the same parts of the same triangle this time. I'll go uh, four to seven, but that one, four to seven, in other words, left to bottom here, equals left to bottom there, which is gonna be six over y. So, same kind of thing, four y equals seven times six, y equals 42 divided by four, which is the same thing as 21 over two, because we reduce, and there we go, same thing. All you've done different with these similar triangles is recognize that, number one, that the third uh, angle is third angles are congruent, which makes them similar triangles. And then if necessary, just kind of go, kind of flip that book. If, I mean, I've, I've seen kids in my classes before physically flip the book upside down so they can visualize this a lot better. Or you can just redraw it or whatever you want. Okay, all right, let's try the practice set. Go ahead and do A, you need two equations. Take a second, figure out those two equations. Go ahead and pause it and try it. All right, Florence had 80 nickels and dimes. Stop. Nickels plus dimes equals 80. Okay, their value is 650. Well, nickels are 5 cents, dimes are 10 cents, and the whole thing is 650 cents. So there we go. Now again, you, you could choose whatever you want. You could use substitution. You could take this D and clop it over there and go N equals 80 minus D. I'm gonna put this and substitute down here and figure it out. Or I think it might be just easier to just multiply by either five or 10. You could get rid of the, you know, you know, let's just do 10. 10 times the number of dimes, 10 times the number of nickels, 80 times 10 is 800. So let's just subtract, right? Yoink. That is gonna give me five times N. Those are gone. 800 uh, minus 650 is 150. So five times the number of nickels, five into 150, that'll be three and then a zero. So there are 30 nickels, okay? If there are 30 nickels and Florence had 80 nickels and dimes total, then the number of dimes she has has to be 50, right? And there you go. Let's prove it. 50 dimes is how much money? Five dollars, right? Okay. So 30 nickels, what's 30 times five? Well, that's 150, 150 cents. What's that add up to? There you go, you proved it's right, okay. All right, go ahead and pause it and try B. Two equations, get them. 
Okay, roses sold for 12 each and daffodils for four each. Jim bought 35 flowers. Stop. That means the roses plus the daffodils. There are 35 of them total, right? Roses are 12, daffodils are four, and it's a total of 300. So something is equal to 300, even in this, you know, this fake kind of money that doesn't really exist in the real world. You know, it's like uh, unicorns or customer service. Okay, 12 for the roses, there's 12. Four for the daffodils, four. Boom, there's your equation, okay? So you can, again, you can do substitution if you want, or you can just go ahead and go, you know, multiply. I'll just multiply by four, because that seems a little simpler. So four times the daffodils, four times the roses, 35 times four is 140, all right? So I'm gonna subtract all the way across. Gone, four times 12 is negative eight times the roses. 140 minus 300 is negative 160. And then if you do the arithmetic, negative eight goes into negative 160, 20 times. By the way, if you ever get like a negative answer, oh, you know, uh, Jim bought negative 20 roses. I wanna see that, okay, anyway. All right, the roses, there are 20 of them. He bought 35 flowers total. That tells us there have to be 15 daffodils. There you go, that's all there is to it. All right, go ahead and practice, or excuse me, uh, pause it and try C and then come back in a second. All right, if you're the kind of person that likes to redraw, let's redraw. You know, the similar triangle there, like that. Don't draw it like that. That's terrible. Okay, so anyhow, the looks like the Y is going to be on the bottom here, and the 5 is on the left, and the X is right here, and here is my double, and then uh, this will be right here. Okay, there we go. So we can, if you want to, there you go find x and y. Okay. Well, you know, I'm just going to go like this. I'll do 3 to 5 is 5 to x. So 3 to 5 is equal to 5 to x. That means 3x is equal to 25. And then x will be 25 divided by 3. Piece of cake. Okay, why? Let's do another one. Well, how about this? Let's just go 3 to 4 is the same as 5 to y. Or you could do 3 to 5 is the same thing as 4 to y. Whatever, as long as you're consistent. Um, so I'll go 3 to 4 is 5 to y. So 3 times y is 3y. 4 times 5 is 20. So y is equal to 20 over 3. There you go. Okay. Hope you guys had a good day today, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.